Hey, thanks for joining Danny and Rudy and me, Danny's dog down there quietly in his lap. And we're studying uh, what God has instructed the people to do to honor his presence among them. I don't know how better to say that. And so we're going to talk about the table of the bread of the presence in Exodus 25. Verse 23 says, you shall make a table of Achaia wood. Two cubits long, one cubit wide, and a cubit and a half high. Rudy, do you have any numbers there for us? No, this one, uh, this is peculiar to to itself, uh, but it it doesn't make a reference. Two by one, ultimately, is the tabernacle, okay. the curtain, the curtain that goes around. It is 150 feet by 75 feet. So it is two to one. Okay. Okay, and you know we think that this is some kind of gigantic thing, but it's the size of a normal city house lot. There you are. <laughs> you know. <laughs> so let's let's go to verse thirty, and, and you can pick anything between there. Verse thirty says, "And you shall set the bread of the presence on the table before me continually." Let's so, talk about that. Well. It was supposed to be in two rows, six loaves in each one, and then there was oil and frankincense laid on it. Uh, I don't believe they were ever burned on that table, but uh, the high priest and his family, every Sabbath, the next Sabbath, would eat this bread, eat the bread that was on the table. Uh, in a holy place. Yeah. So, and, go ahead. You know, for me, uh, this is basically the bread of life uh, because really all of the things in the front portion of the tabernacle deal really with Jesus. Yeah, okay. So, Danny, God's obviously not hungry, but he wanted them to set the bread out before him. Why in the world did God, both of you guys, but I'm going to turn to Danny for a second. Why, why do you think God wanted this bread placed there? Oh, well, I cannot speak on behalf of God's wants, but <laughs> I'm sorry to disappoint y'all, but it is to me a perpetual form of offering and a perpetual form of offering in the form of bread may not seem like much, but context sure does imply the contrary. At this time, they are, they are in the middle of a desert, okay? And I know we've talked about, oh, bring us your gold and your brass and your bronze, that was something the Egyptians had given them, but when it comes to sacrificing a bull or sacrificing your bread, there's no convenience stores around there. You know, this is what sacrifice is. It costs you something. Mm -hmm. And uh, that perpetual form of sacrifice for offering um, at the very least it implies reverence well <clears throat> you know I think that it has a similitude a fractal to having a meal with us in some on some levels uh, everything that's alive eats to stay alive but humanity is the only one that has meals together. And the frankincense and the oil being laid on top of it kind of, for me, is like uh, the prayers of the saints and the Holy Spirit cover this bread. And uh, there's a lot going on in there. And it, it really, I think it's a fractal of everything that goes on in the whole tabernacle. And I, now I'm just realizing maybe that's the reason its dimensions 
or the tabernacle two by one. Okay, there you go. So let, let can we move to the lampstand? Sure. Let's do that really quick. Huh, we can't do that really quick. No, you, but you can't. Sh <laughs> you shall make verse thirty one. You shall make a lampstand of pure gold, and and then there are six branches and there are the petals and, and so it's a little bit like reading uh, a blueprint and blueprints are not exact I don't read blueprints but there this is like the blueprints but there's a lot here so Rudy why don't you dig into this lampstand and uh, and talk to us about that because I know you've got a lot to lot to say well Jesus overall Jesus not overall, but <clears throat> the main point of the lamps, the menorah, is uh, basically Jesus is the light of the world. And in the construction of it, it's kind of like you can't break any of the bones in the lamb for Passover. This lampstand can't be put together in pieces. It has to be one complete molded uh, piece of gold. And on it, you know, there's these calyxes, these uh, almond blossoms, and there happens to be 22 of them, which is the amount of consonants in the Hebrew language. So, as well as Jesus being the light of the world, every word that was ever spoken comes from the 22 calyxes, basically the 22 letters of the Hebrew language. He is the light of the world, and the word became flesh. And it's one solid piece of gold. Yeah. Hallelujah. Can't beat that. What about the oil not running out? Uh, you, you, can't, you can't let the light go out, so you have to keep the oil. The high priest is the one that tends this. And not only that, there the oil lamps that were on top of the menorah, and there are seven of them, they were all supposed to be with a, they had a guard in the back of them so they could position the light. And the light of the seven oil lamps was focused in the front. He is the way, the truth, the life, and the word became flesh. All of that, for me, is tied up in the menorah. Yeah. Fantastic. Danny, does, does the celebration of Hanukkah fit in with the oil in this regard? For sure. I was actually thinking of a specific component of the menorah, which in Hebrew is called the Shamash. Okay? And it is the perpetual light on the menorah. It's named that. Four here, four here, but then you've got the this one. is a this is a Hanukkah menorah. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I apologize. I got all my holidays, but there's this perpetual light that lights all the other lights and the shamash. Uh, to this day, is part of the visual iconography of any synagogue. The Ark, again, the word Ark, in which the Torah, the five books of Moses, uh, are held in any synagogue. It has a veil, but above it, it has a representation of a, a lamp. Uh, it's usually electric these days, but I imagine before Edison, or actually Tesla, that's a whole other thing. <laughs> it <laughs> Not <was>. the car. <laughs> right, no, it was, because it's this perpetual burning light. Do you, do you remember what near Talmud means in Hebrew? Talmud? Near Talmud, that, that actually was the name, the name of the light that was always above the ark. Uh, but it was representative of the menorah, I right. for sure, but it, I, I, can't, I, you know, I was sitting here thinking, what did Nir Tommy mean? And I, well, back to Bob's question about 
the menorah and the, the correct holiday I was referencing is indeed Hanukkah and the great miracle of Hanukkah, at least the ones that most people recognize is the fact that after the destruction of the entire city, this small portion of oil was found to relight basically the shamash, and it lasted eight days. Eight days, contrary to what was assumed, it would light and then burn right out. So, but there's I am the light of the world. That's it. Pray for us. Lord, you are the light of the world. Yeah. Uh, in the midst of all the darkness, Lord, may we always seek the light that you are shining. Lord, thank you that no matter what, you are shining that light. And uh, thank you that you don't give up on us and that you exceed our expectations and that your covenant and love for people began so long ago and it continues to this day. Thank you for loving us even when we don't love you back. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you guys. Thank you for the just the wealth of information you have squeezing it down to on these videos about 10 minutes so thank you all god bless you thank you all for listening we'll see you tomorrow have a great day